I do not play the harpsichord, but I am a harpsichord mechanic. And nobody can have a harpsichord unless you've got a harpsichord mechanic close at hand. They go out of tune fast. They, they have lots of parts that need, need some attention from time to time. And I'm the mechanic. But I do know a little bit of uh, music and, and uh, play it occasionally. Um, I have had a class in, in music way back when. and uh, I enjoy the sound that comes from it, and I enjoy people who really know how to play it. We originally got it because we wanted to have a keyboard instrument for our growing children to have in the home to, to play. Um, we had the opportunity to bring from Minnesota to South Carolina uh, my mother-in-law's piano. Uh, but it was a big upright and there was no way I was going to move an upright piano halfway across the country. The interesting thing was we had a colleague that had a harpsichord amongst his many other instruments in his, movie, in his music room and the sound of it was so intriguing. It just made all of that music from before 1800 just come alive. There's two ways to, to buy, three ways to buy a harpsichord. Um, you can buy a new one, nicely minted. You can buy a used one from somebody who is getting rid of it for whatever reason. And the other way is the way that I got this one. I purchased it as a kit. And then you have the, the wonderful fun of putting it together. You get to see how all of the parts work together from the inside out. And you get uh, a lot more intimate feeling for the final product that you have. And, and maybe it adds a little more to the enjoyment of it. It, it took me about two years uh, to put it together. The Zuckerman kits come in two parts. There's the box, the framework, all the woodwork and things of that nature. And then there's the musical part. Um, the strings, the action, the keyboard, and all of that. And it's a really good idea that they have it in two separate parts because I think if you got it all in one shot, you probably wouldn't want to do it. Pretty easy to put the parts, the, the wooden box together. And once you do that, and if you're careful about doing it, then you feel a lot more confident about tackling the, the minute detail that's necessary to have every one of those hitch pins in exactly the right place. Every one of those little pins there. You have to drill the hole for that. You have to glue each one of those pieces of felt in place exactly where it needs to be. And so that takes a lot of, a lot of patience, a lot of skill, a lot of determination to, uh, to make it right. I would not have been able to tune it if my colleague hadn't had a complete octave of tuning forks. Um, without that, this novice would have, would have never been able to get it in tune. It comes with a A440 tuning fork, but uh, not having heard intervals before and in all, I would have never gotten it tuned. But with that, I was able to, to bring it all up to pitch and, and get it sounding like it should sound. The Zuckerman kit, they have several different models. And this one has one keyboard, three sets of strings. And the set that you have heard is one of the eight foot sets of strings that, that run the full length of, of the whole instrument here. You can see there's also a, a set that is shorter. Those strings would play an octave higher than what? So you'd, you'd push one key you'd get two different pitches. You'd get the, the normal one and then you'd get the higher one. 
There's also two sets of eight foot strings. I've got both eight foot strings turned on now. And if I play it slow, you, you can hear the two strings plucking at different times as I very slowly push the, the key down. And it's giving you more volume. That's the loot stop. The difference between a harpsichord and a piano the, is that the sound is generated on a harpsichord by plucking the strings. It's like the, the harp player would do with their fingers on the strings, except this is little bits of plastic. In, in the 1700s, it would have been uh, goose quills uh, would have had the rigidity to, to do the plucking, but they wear out a lot faster than this nice 20th century plastic. The piano smacks the string with a hammer, a felt hammer, and puts the energy in the string. This puts the energy in a string by, by literally plucking it and the string vibrates. Both instruments pick up that sound in the soundboard and amplify it throughout the whole soundboard and out into the room. The lid, of course, helps bounce that sound out uh, filling a, a larger space. So, it's an ancient, ancient instrument, but it makes ancient music come alive.